That's so good. And then that's absolutely true. And I've seen a lot of people, you know, take a little bit of time to achieve success. And I've seen a lot of people that just stay the course, you know, that do the right things in the right order at the right times for the right reasons. And over that, you know, period of time, it's quite amazing to see how much you can amass, you know, whether it's in your finances, you know, or in your health, or even in your relationship with your significant other, your kids. So remember the quality of your, you know, results will be directly related to where you spend your time. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hey, our sponsor for the show today is Pine Financial Group, the leader in hard money lending in Colorado and Minnesota. And they were recently approved to offer their investment publicly. This investment offers only for investors in Colorado and Minnesota and is only made through their investment prospects. Get your copy today. Simply visit www.pineinvestments.com and click to get started. Look, there's a reason why some of the wealthiest people in history invest in loans backed by real estate. Learn more about the risks and returns at www.pineinvestments.com. Hey, welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me today, I've got Trevor McGregor. Trevor, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Todd. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you joining the show. And Trevor, uh, you were on episode 18, which was a long time ago. Um, we'll be right around, uh, well, I haven't said it yet, but right around episode 190. So it's been a while since I've had you on. So I'm excited to have you back because you brought a ton of energy and a ton of fantastic content the last time. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say today. Well, that's awesome. And yeah, you've done a few episodes since that time. And uh, obviously, sharing a lot of key concepts with people all over the planet that are tuning in. So looking forward to sharing some more nuggets today, Todd. Well, why don't you give our listeners just like maybe a, a minute or two about who you are, they can if they want like the full story, they can go back to episode 18. But let's just give a, a, a you know, kind of a brief overall who you are, uh, you know, what you do, and uh, why you're awesome. Well, thank you for that. And there's a saying that if you spot it, you've got it. So if you think <laughs> I'm awesome, buddy, it's because you are as well. And yes, my name is Trevor McGregor. I'm a high performance, peak performance real estate coach and mentor. I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada with my wife and our three boys. And uh, I'm also a high level, you know, investor in many different facets of, of real estate. So um, I really make my living and I really, you know, honor the fact that I'm here to support people who are also looking to grow in all aspects of their life, you know, whether that's in their personal life, their career, their finances, their real estate, their fulfillment, but pre predominantly through real estate. I mean, I believe that real estate is one of the greatest wealth vehicles on the planet where we can be entrepreneurial. We can go out there and there's no limit to how many deals we can do or how much money we can make. But even more importantly, that we have the ability to impact communities, impact families, um, impact, you know, everyone else that helps us get there. And I call those people professional pillars. So the lenders, the investors, the landscapers, the plumbers, the electricians, all of those people. And uh, I'm absolutely passionate about it. Awesome. Awesome. Now, how does it, uh, you know, you've got this awesome coaching business and you've got your investing, but then you've got a wife that's just crushing it too. How does it feel to have a wife that's one upping you? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> well, we call ourselves uh, the dynamic duo and we're just passionate about, um, you know, really sharing our gifts with humanity. And, you know, I was blessed and grateful to have been able to work with Tony Robbins personally for over half a decade, Todd. And it was really there that I really understood that the secret to living is giving. Mm. And that could be giving your time, that could be giving your knowledge, that could be giving money, that could be giving anything. And Lisa and I have this insatiable appetite to play at a level that, you know, most people think is probably a little bit of a fairy tale. I mean, we work very hard, but we also play hard. So whether that's in her coaching business, my coaching business, we're both professional keynote speakers, 
We've done, I don't know, five real estate deals just this year alone, you know, in different aspects, which I'll get into in a minute. But we also travel the world. I mean, we travel internationally at least four times a year. So whether that's in Spain or Italy or Hong Kong, Australia, Costa Rica, you know, we've set up our life that we can literally live from anywhere we want as long as it has an internet connection and a telephone. So <laughs> in addition to that, we have three boys. And, you know, some people call us crazy for pulling them out of school at times and, you know, taking them around the world. But we believe that, you know, they're going to learn a lot more outside of the classroom than maybe they would, you know, in a traditional school setting. So they're still in traditional school, but we do not hesitate to, you know, book flights, get them on an airplane and go somewhere for a week or two weeks. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So give me a couple tips for my listeners that <clears throat> they're going, man, I would love to travel four times a year. I don't even care if it's internationally. Just I just want to travel four times a year. I can't even get away once a year. Uh, yet I'm trying to grow this business and maybe I've got a full-time job and I've got kids and a wife and all this stuff. How do I balance and make this happen? Now, you don't have to give all the ingredients away because that would be like four shows worth. But give us a couple tips on, you know, how do we balance that stuff and be able to fit those things in? Well, it's a super question, Todd. And I think before I share with the listeners how to balance it, I think you have to ask, do you believe in stretching or reaching up higher than where you're reaching right now? I mean, mm. one of the universal laws that I live by is the law of expansion. That means that we as human beings, whether it's our business life or our personal life, we're either in contraction and playing small, you know, and kind of living and making out an existence, or we're saying, you know what, who do I need to be and how do I need to show up differently to expand, to do things differently, to grow, to stretch. And so I think that the first thing you got to really ask yourself is, is it possible to travel more or open a business or buy more real estate or do something differently tomorrow than what you're doing today. Because if you think you can, you will. And if you think you can't, you won't. So it's not just how do we balance it's Do we believe that there's a possibility where we can stretch that rubber band even a little bit more? And it's been our belief and it's been our reality that, you know, as we stretch it a little bit, it expands and we stretch it a little bit more and it expands. So it's not like we were traveling four, you know, weeks out of the year or four times out of the year internationally out of the gate, you know, maybe it was two times and then it was three times and then it went back to two times, but now it's four times. So a little bit of ebb and flow, a little bit of planning and a little bit of, you know, creating what we call life by design. And then really just, you know, almost having that defiant commitment not to live in, what we call normalcy, where, you know, most people are going to work 50 weeks of the year, they're going to go to Mexico one week of the year, and they're going to do a staycation one week of the year, you know, and that's just not what we believe life is about. We're here to live on purpose and with purpose. And we also believe that by doing this, and we're not selfish, that it does inspire other people to want to play a bigger game. And that's why I come on phenomenal shows like this one, or I stand on stages and I've stood on stages throughout the U S and Canada, the UK, you know, Italy, as far away as Australia and New Zealand. And people go, well, if that guy from Canada can do it, why can't I? So it's not like I'm special. I've just worked very hard to really define what I want, why I want it. And then I start reverse engineering how to go get it. And that's what I call finding that work-life balance. Oh, yeah. A lot, lot of good points there. Because um, I think, you know, a, a lot of us want that. Hey, we want to take these four, I mean, four vacations internationally going everywhere. That sounds so fun, so cool. But as you said, you didn't start there either. You, you weren't taking these four vacations right away. And so many of us hear someone like you or other people talking about all these trips that they have or things that they do, and we want it instantly. How do we, you know, when we're hearing all these people and, and there's so much noise right now, especially with the internet, with Facebook, I mean, you know, we've talked about it before. There's so many, there's people posting and they've done this and this and this and this. And it's like, how do we 
kind of work around some of that stuff and then get our mind in, into the right mindset that we don't have to have it all today. Well, that's exactly the same thing as when a lot of people get started in real estate, you know, or building a business. If you really want to have these pillars of wealth, you know, which this podcast is named after, you got to start with a single step. Maybe that means buying your first multifamily property after you've bought you know, one single family property. Maybe that's like taking an international trip after you've, you know, taken a trip in your beautiful state or wherever you live. But I'm of the belief, Todd, that it's really about the visioneering process. That's a term that comes to us from Mr. Walter Disney. We know him as Walt Disney, where you got to dream. You got to really see it on the screen of your mind. And the mind is a very powerful tool where you know, some science says that we're only using about five or 6% of our mental capacity to create, you know, whereas roughly 95% of everything else is subconscious. So we get up, we typically do the same things every day, we eat the same foods, we drive the same route to work, we watch the same television program, we wear the same clothes. And ultimately, that's okay. But for people like you and I who really want to build wealth and not just wealth in finances, but wealth in experiences. I mean, I really believe that the fabric that makes up this, this whole journey we're on is going out there and doing new things. So buying a different, you know, real estate property, opening a business, closing a business, you know, getting into new relationships with family or friends or trying new sports. I mean, when's the last time you ate a food for that you had never eaten before for the first time? I really do believe in our philosophy, my wife and I, is that, you know what, if you're not out there trying new things, you're really cheating yourself out of having, you know, what we call magic moments. Yeah. Wow. That, that, that's good. And that's so true. When was the last time you had a food? Uh, and it's been a while, for me at least. Uh, it's and, crazy, isn't it? It's and, that and, simple, though. Yeah, it is that simple. And usually when I have that new, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is the first time I had squid and octopus, my neighbor brought it over to me. And I thought this is disgusting. Like this is the worst thing he's ever brought. Like, I, I don't know why this guy, but his window, we're in, in the in the city and his window looked into my dining room window. And I'm like, I got to eat this thing. Yep. So I ate it and it was the best meal I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I love it. And, and what if that is true in, in business? You know, let's say that you're chugging along in your own business or you're working for someone in a business and you've got this insatiable appetite to do real estate. Well, as a master platinum coach, and I've done over 20,000 coaching calls, one of the you know, majority questions I'll ask someone is what prevents? What's preventing you from at least, you know, going out there and finding someone else in real estate who's done what it is you're trying to do? That might be somebody that has bought a single family home, flipped a single family home. Maybe they're doing the Burr strategy. Maybe they're buying their first multifamily property. And you don't have to buy a hundred unit. Maybe you start with a 10 unit or a 12 unit. You know, I always say that most people, and this comes from my master, Tony Robbins. He says, most people overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what they can do in three years. So, it's really, you know, you don't have to conquer it today, but you got to start going down a series of steps and taking those steps that will ultimately lead you to what it is you really want. And, you know, we're all going to do this rocking chair test time. That means when we turn 95 years old or, gosh, with the medical technology advancements coming out now, maybe we're 105 or 125 years old, but we're going to sit there and right before we die, we're going to ask, you know, what do I regret? You know, what did I not do when I was younger when I had that insatiable appetite to go try it? Or I felt it on my heart. Because the universe gives us all something called desire. And if you look up the Latin root of the word desire, it literally means of the Father, of God, of creation, of source. So it's my belief that the universe doesn't place a desire on your heart that you're not meant to go out there and fulfill. And so if, you know, wealth, travel, relationships, spiritual connection or fulfillment is something that's on your heart, you've got an obligation to go out there and honor yourself and honor God and pursue it to your fullest of point. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Well, I love it. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And when you talk about that, I mean, it's just, it, life is, you know, obviously life is short. We all know that. Um, but we're so stuck in that day to day. I think uh, most of us all the time that oftentimes we never think about where we're at and where we want to be and how we're going to expand and grow. We're just doing the daily grind and we're not pushing ourselves and expanding and growing ourselves and reaching up, as you said earlier. Uh, and it's so important to be uh, reminded of that and to be always thinking about that, which is why one of the reasons why I, I value you know you so much is because it's a, it's a reminder every time when we do talk of, you know, reaching up and achieving more. Um, it's so important to remember. Well, it really is. And again, most people today, 97% of Americans are on the hamster wheel. You yeah. know, they're on the treadmill. And today is going to be the same thing tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But really, you know, that's not what we're here for. We're here to learn, to laugh, to share to grow and to have new experiences and support our fellow man and woman. So that means that you need some sort of inspiration to take you, you know, just off that treadmill for a minute that says, you know, not just what do I want, but what do I want and why do I want it? You know, is it for me? Is it for my wife? Is it for my husband? Is it for my kids? Is it for humanity? I mean, I remind people that you'll do more for other people than oftentimes you will for your own self. And Todd, I think you're cut from that cloth where I know you would give the shirt off your back to somebody who needed it more than you. And that's not to say that there aren't enough shirts to go around for everyone, but I'm here to say that if you're on that treadmill, you got to stop and ask yourself, you know, is it possible that if I watch a really inspiring YouTube clip or I read a great book, or if I go to a great real estate conference, kind of like the North Star conference you put on, where I can literally elevate my emotions and be around like-minded entrepreneurs where I see other people out there doing something that I might want to do. And it's when we elevate our emotions, we get fired up about possibility, right. and then we unleash our creativity to make <laughs> it happen. And that's what I love about this three-pound mass between our ears called our brain is it's yeah. capable of more than what you're using it for right now. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, you know, you talk with successful people all the time. You're talking with people uh, with what you do as a coach. You're talking with people who are probably, you know, it, it, somewhere in that beginning stage, maybe working their way up and they want to get to be really successful to all the way to you're talking to very successful people, people that have done a ton of amazing things already. What sets those people apart that are doing those amazing things already? What are some of the habits or some of the, you know, success um, strategies that they're really focusing on that set them apart from maybe some of the people that you coach that they're maybe awesome people, but they never quite get there. It's such a great question, Todd. And I find that as I do a lot of calls with people that are from all walks of life, different, you know, parts of the country, different ethnicities, different ages, you know, all of those things, there's really only three things that propel us. And that is our state our story and our strategy. They all start with the letter S. And I think most successful people are really aware of their own state management. That is when they're in a negative state or something isn't working, they recognize it and they defiantly commit to not staying there. They say, you know what? I need to shift. I need to change. I need to try something different because you know, to live in a valley is a lot different than living on top of a mountain. So I think that a lot of the Fortune 500 ex executives I coach, a lot of the business owners, a lot of the real estate, you know, entrepreneurs, and some of them are, you know, extremely successful. I coach a lot of, you know, professional athletes. I even coach Olympians. And if there's one thing that they all have in common is they're aware of their state and how they own their state management. Does that resonate? Give me, give me an example of, of maybe 
somebody that you don't have to say your name, of course, but give me an example of that. Well, it's really simple. I'll give you uh, a couple of examples. You'll have a business person, male or female, you know, and some are really, when you think of what state management is, state management is largely what we call focus. Mm -hmm. And where focus goes, energy flows. So if you've got a, a person in business that's struggling, you know, they might be focused on just staying above water. They might be focused on survival. They might be focused on, you know, what's not working. Whereas people that step into the higher version of themselves focus on what they want. They focus on solutions. They focus on, you know, how can I leverage technology or other people to support me at this time? So state management for anyone that is successful is really about where they put their energy, their time, their focus. And you know what? They really understand that you're never supposed to make a life altering decision when you're in a valley. You got to start climbing out of that valley and moving back up the mountain because all emotion is changed by motion. You know, most people sit down and cry when, you know, guys like you and I, I mean, you and I have known each other a long time, Todd, and I know your, your, your story, your history, and we've had success, but we've also had some challenges in real estate where we had to get up, dust ourselves off, and keep on keeping on, as Napoleon Hill would say. And that's really what separates the, you know, successful entrepreneur from somebody that just gets stuck and stays where they are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the last time you were on back in episode 18, you told the story of when you were younger and, and the, the challenges that you had. And that's exactly what we're talking about is, is being able to push through there. You could have crawled in a hole. You could have went and got a, a job uh, and worked and made, you know, 20 bucks an hour or whatever, but you chose not to do that. And, uh, and, it, it was it was challenging, but you took that challenge and you faced it head on. Well, that's exactly right. I think we all face challenges, but you got to remember challenges are a sign of life. Mm -hmm. Challenges are the universe's way of getting you to grow. Right. And there's a great quote by Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich. And he says that every adversity brings with it the seed of equal, e equivalent advantage. I'll say it again every adversity brings with it the seed of equivalent advantage. What does that mean? Well, it means that behind every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. The sun is behind the cloud, I guarantee it. And if you look at the outer edges of the cloud, they're not dark, they're actually silver or white. And life is the same way. So when you get knocked down, you know, when you come up against a challenge in your career, your finances, your health, your relationships, it's the universe's way of redirecting your focus and getting you to change things up. And that's exactly what I had to do. And ultimately it led me to, you know, a lot of great things in real estate and a lot of great things in coaching, which now are the foundation of what I get up at every day. I get up at 4.44 AM and I can't wait to go do what the universe is presenting me with. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, getting knocked down, it's just like, you know, let's say you're going to, do the bench press and you can't bench press 200 pounds and you, you try that bench press and it lands on your chest and you're stuck and somebody has to get it off you. Well, there's two options. One is to never do that again uh, because you just can't. Or the other option is to start lifting more weights and getting yourself prepped. So then the next time when you do that, you'll push it all the way up. And that's a beautiful metaphor. And it really leads into the second S, Todd, because the second S is your story. And your story is really your identity. There's really only two identities. You're either going to be a victim, you know, and sit in the muddy water and cry and say, I'm never lifting weights again. Or you're going to step out of that identity and into your higher identity called your victor and be victorious by getting back on that bench press and starting to lift maybe you know, 50 pounds and then 75 pounds and then 100 pounds. But as long as you're defiantly committed to your outcome of lifting 200 pounds, you'll get there. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's so easy to blame others, right? That's the easy way out. Uh, yep. We can all, we, and we all do it. We get, we all get caught up doing it because I mean, you just, you hear it every day from people around you, but 
it's so important to take responsibility for yourself. I saw a quote, quote I can't remember the exact wording, but it was by Grant Cardone. And it, it's, it said that very similar. I mean, you, we are the energy that we create. We are what we create and everything that's happening in our life, we need to take responsibility for. If we're not going to, we're never going to succeed. We're never going to get where we need to be. That's exactly right. And that's why that second S of what is your story or what is your identity is so powerful because here's what you really have to realize that if you sit down in your, in your misery, you know, that's low energy, that's low vibration. So if you're in that low vibration, of course, you're going to shame other people, blame other people, justify it. You know, it was Trump's fault or it was, you know, the hurricane hit the, the city or the tornado took out somewhere in Texas. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you can only control what you can control. Right. And that is your state and your story. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, you find yourself in that blame or shame or justification where literally you rationalize everything in terms of why it doesn't work. And here's the secret. If you break down the word rationalize, you start telling yourself rational lies. And those <laughs> lies perpetuate. And then you find yourself in this negative vortex that you just can't get out of. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, we our minds are powerful, man. We can believe what we tell it. Spot <laughs> even, on. Even though they're lies. Uh, so, so the last one then, the, the strategy. Let's go through that. You bet. The strategy is really, you know, answering these three questions. What do you want? Why do you want it? And then reverse engineering a plan to go and get it. Mm. You know, and most people, you know, shoot for the moon when they can shoot for the stars. There's always a bigger, bigger outcome if you believe there is, but you got to know what is my outcome, you know, and most people don't spend enough time getting crystal clear of what that looks like, right? So they'll sit there and go, well, it's got to be this, or it's got to be that, or it's got to be that. Well, really go back to your desire. What's on your heart? Because your heart knows what you want a million times more than what your brain knows. So I often, you know, tell my clients, let's drop out of your head. Let's get into your heart. Let's find out what you really, really want, why you want it. And then we'll formulate a plan to get you there. So a strategy at the end of the day, Todd, is simply a roadmap, a recipe or blueprint that takes you from where you are to where you want to be. And I'll give you an example because you know, we know in America right now that a lot of people are obese or they're overweight and they want to shed a few pounds. I mean, have you or do you, has anyone you know, you know, ever wanted to release some weight? Uh, yep. You yep. bet. <laughs> Most people do. And so yeah. they immediately go, well, what's the strategy? Right? right. And they go, well, I'm going to go on this diet or I'm going to join this gym or I'm going to go to Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers. And they start executing the strategy, but what they're missing. And the reason why 54% of Americans, unfortunately, are obese is they don't have a higher state and story. They don't have the focus and they don't have the identity that's then going to support them executing on a strategy successfully. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I mean, you're saying, if I'm hearing it right, is, is they should be really spending some true time focusing on what why? Like, what, right. why are they wanting to lose this weight? What is it for? Who is it for? And then reverse engineering how they're going to get there. That is exactly right. Are they doing it so they're healthier? Are they doing it so they can keep up with their children? Are they doing it so their clothes don't fit so tight? Are they doing it so they don't, you know, develop, you know, diabetes or heart disease? I mean, there's lots of reasons. And we often say when the why is big enough, the right. how will present itself. What same thing in real estate, same thing in business. You know, if you're working in a J-O-B and you're at that stage of your life where you're going, is this all there is? Because you really want to start building your own pillars of wealth and maybe you want to open your own, you know, home-based business or maybe you want to do something online or maybe you want to get into real estate. You really have to align what do you want? Why do you want it? And then I'm telling you, there's very little that hasn't been done where you can find a coach or a teacher or a mentor or a trainer to take you by the hand and help you achieve what it is that you're setting out to do. 
Yeah, and I think it's important uh, to understand what happens if you don't, right? What happens if you don't lose that weight? What happens if you, uh, you know, don't build your pillars of wealth? What then what is it? What are your consequences if you don't do it? That's right. And there are consequences to everything. And ultimately, you're going to either, you know, move towards what it is you want, or you're going to stay stuck with what you don't want. And then come up with excuses like, well, it never works. Or, you know, I don't have a, you know, a strong enough money blueprint, or I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too educated, I'm not educated enough. And again, we'll start to tell ourselves those rational lies that really prevent us from even going out there and trying. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. Hey, let's take a minute to thank our sponsor, Pine Financial Group. Look, you work hard for your money. Is your money working hard for you? Because of inflation, money sitting idle erodes your wealth. Many investors understand that real estate is a great investment, but may not want the effort or the risk that comes with owning their own property. They want to sit back and have payments, hit their bank account each and every month. Stop eroding your wealth and start building it by asking your money to work for you. You should be earning profits while you sleep in investment backed by real estate. Pine Financial Group, the leader in hard money lending in Colorado and Minnesota, was recently approved to offer their investment publicly. This investment offers only for investors in Colorado and Minnesota and is only made through the investment prospectus. Get your copy today. Simply visit www.pineinvestments.com and click to get started. There's a reason why some of the wealthiest people in history invest in loans backed by real estate. Learn more about the risks and returns at www.pineinvestments.com. It's www.pineinvestments.com. I want to invite you to join us at the North Star Real Estate Conference. This conference is September 20 and 21st in Minneapolis, and it's going to be packed full of a ton of great speakers. We've got uh, just a, a great group of people speaking. You can look at our lineup on our website, nreconference.com, and sign up there as well. We've got an early bird special. All you need to do is type in early bird, one word, and and uh, you can get $100 off. And that's good through August 10th. So make sure you sign up now. Take action. Look, people that take action and value their education are those who are going to succeed. I know there's a lot of free content. My podcast is free. There's all kinds of free content out there. Maybe even free meetups that you're attending. But this conference is going to blow your socks off. This is going to be well worth the price and all the profits go to charity. So it's definitely time to take action. Sign up now. Don't delay because the prices will go up. Um, but you know what? Every time I attend a conference, I 10x. Actually, I would say I more like a thousand X even my investment, a hundred, a thousand, potentially even more X my investment. I've met so many fantastic people. I've met investors at conferences. I've met potential partners at conference. I've joined mastermind groups because of conferences. So it's a ton of value. You cannot replace it. So check it out. NREconference.com. Thanks a lot. One more question, or I probably have 20 more questions, but, um, you know, we, we're all busy. We all uh, have so many distractions. Um, any any tips for people who are, are you know, busy, but want to stay focused, want to continue to push on and, and achieve their goals? Um, how do we separate that, you know, busy work with the, the deep and important work? Oh, I love your question. And it's so universal. I mean, the best way to answer that is to remind people about the rule of 168. Hmm. And if you don't know about the rule of 168, the rule of 168 decrees that we all have 168 hours a week. Todd, you've got the same number as me. I've got the same number as you. Same number as Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, Richard Branson. So really, we've got to really understand that we sleep for a bunch of those hours. We eat, we shower, we shave, we take care of the kids. 
you know, we might work in our job, but really what are you doing to really carve out two, three, four, five hours a week to start working on your dream? Because here's the secret. I can tell the quality of your life by where you spend your time. What's important to you? And whether you feel you're on that hamster wheel with a subpar state story and strategy, or if you're ready to enter into a different state story and strategy that says, you know what, I'm going to carve out four hours this week and I'm going to read a book. I'm going to buy an online course. I'm going to go to an event. I'm going to watch a webinar. And then you start piecing week after week after week together where four hours becomes eight, becomes 12, becomes 16. And can you imagine if you just did this for 30, 60 or 90 days and you owned that time and protected that time, just what amazing things you could get clarity on and move towards accomplishing. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, it reminds me of, uh, Darren Hardy's book. Um, Oh, the compound effect. That's correct. Love the compound effect. Love Darren Hardy. He's the publisher of success magazine and he's spot on it compounds. Yeah. Do a, do a little, little bit today and it's going to compound and eventually, you know, it's not, going to make the difference necessarily tomorrow, but it will eventually make that difference as you continue to make those strides forward. So that's right. And I guess on that, I would also add is be very careful comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. I mean, they're on their journey, just like you're on your journey. Some people, you know, go at the speed of a cheetah and some people go at the you know, speed of a turtle and we're all definely perfect you know, in the eyes of God, that means that we are all here to move at different rates, to move at different speeds. So don't give your power away to somebody that might be moving a little bit faster, because we're all divine in our own right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And and that, you know, that's, that was kind of one of the things I was saying earlier, I mean, with with the Facebook and like all the social media and conferences and all that kind of stuff, you see these people and you're like, wow, they, they're doing amazing things. You know, I want to get there and you can really, it, it's easy to compare yourself to them and go, wow, I haven't really achieved much. When, again, sometimes we don't even know how much they've truly achieved, what they've done. Uh, everybody's got a different story and are in different places of their life. And you know what, some people that are running faster today may stumble along the way. Um, and you may catch them. It's the tortoise and the hare thing. So just That's because right. you're going slower today doesn't mean you're not going to get there in the end. As long as you're doing those things and taking those strides forward, things that you've been talking about today, uh, you'll eventually be in a pretty good spot. That's so good. And then that's absolutely true. And I've seen a lot of people, you know, take a little bit of time to achieve success. And I've seen a lot of people that just stay the course, you know, that do the right things in the right order at the right times for the right reasons. And over that, you know, period of time, it's quite amazing to see how much you can amass, you know, whether it's in your finances, you know, or in your health or even in your relationship with your significant other, your kids. So remember the quality of your, you know, results will be directly related to where you spend your time. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, I, I, I know I asked you this last time, but I always like to get this from my guests. What's a, what's a favorite book that you've read? Hands down taught it's think and grow rich by Napoleon yeah. Hill. And yeah. You know, people often say, well, why do you like that book, Trevor? Why have you read it over 50 times? Why do you have the audio version in your SUV? And why can you and your kids recite passages from it (laughs) at the dinner table? Well, it's very simple. And there is a reason why that other than the Bible, it is the number one best-selling book of all time. Because even though it was written back in the 1920s and 30s, the principles in that book are true to this date that it's all in how you think think. It's not in what you do. The doing is important. No question about it. You know, you got to take that intelligent and inspired action. But what comes before that is you believing, you know, in that three pound mass between your ears that possibility exists. And when you start to think and grow rich, and you start to think you can have the better body, and the better relationship and more travel and more abundance and more freedom, the universe starts to show up and help do some heavy lifting 
to help you move towards that. Do you believe that, Todd? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you start to take action. I mean, you talked about you need to take action, but if your mindset is right, you're going to take that action because you believe. That's right. That's right. And again, we call it intelligent and inspired action, mm -hmm. right? So that's my favorite book of all time. And obviously, I got to give a shout out to Tony Robbins. He's got some great books. And you know, some of them have been on the shelves for years for a lot of people, but it's time to pull them out and dust them off. Uh, Awaken the Giant Within, and obviously Personal Power. Those two books alone will, you know, support your mindset in literally reminding you that you can be, do, and have anything you want. Cool. Awesome. Um, you, you mentioned your kids and, and reciting the think and grow rich. What are, uh, you know, what are some things that you do with your kids that kind of, you know, you're obviously trying, you want to see your kids be successful and, you know, grow. What, what are maybe some tips for that for people? Oh, well, that's a great question. And I've got three boys, um, Matthew, Mitchell, and Maxwell. Obviously, we went with the M theme and our last <laughs> name is McGregor. So we got a bunch of M&Ms. Yeah. But really, you know, we really believe in experiences. So I mentioned that we'll travel with the yeah. boys. Uh, we go to a lot of sport events. You know, we go camping. You know, um, we'll typically try to do something once a month that we've never done before. Maybe we'll go, you know, hiking, or maybe we'll go mountain biking, or maybe we'll go play golf at a golf course that we've never played. So as long as we continually introduce them to new things, they have new experiences. And really, when you think about the way children's brains work is we've got all of these electrical and chemical charges going off in our brain. And every time that we experience something new, there's a new neurological connection made. So yeah. I feel that one of the best ways to support our children and to get them ready to go out there and live their best life is to get those neurons firing and excited and fired up about new things and new possibilities, kind of like, you know, Elon Musk. I mean, Elon Musk's brain, can you imagine the electrons and protons and neutrons in there, whether, you know, it was him coming up with PayPal or Solar City or Tesla you know, or, you know, this new boring company is now digging holes underneath cities, let alone SpaceX. I mean, that comes from imagination. And ultimately, the more that you and I, and I know I, you love your kids dearly like I do, the more we can give them the gift of getting those to fire now, the more I believe they're going to go out there and use them on purpose and with purpose. Yeah, and you're, you're stretching their, um, their beliefs too, and they're you're pushing their limitations, right? Their, their boundaries. And so often we have these boundaries and we feel like we're limited to certain things, as you said, but you're pushing your kids boundaries all the time by doing these new experiences and you're not allowing them to be complacent, which is fantastic. Yeah. What's great about that is they inspire their friends. They're now, I mean, we've been, so excited to see some of their friends now go out there and start, you know, little businesses and summer <laughs> businesses. We've seen some of them convince their parents to go travel. We've seen some of them convince their parents to let them, you know, buy an uh, entrepreneurial online course where they're going to unleash their power. And it's just amazing when you see your own kids sharing it with other kids in the neighborhood. It's just yeah. oh, it's heartwarming. <laughs> so that's cool. That's really cool. Um, so tr Trevor, uh, I ask this to all my guests. Um, what are your three pillars of wealth creation? Uh, it's such a great question. My first pillar is the cloth that I'm cut from, which is you always must grow. I mean, Todd, if a plant isn't growing, ultimately what's happening to it? And we know that the answer is it's dying. Yep. Well, I don't want to die and I don't just want to survive. I want to thrive. And the best way to thrive is to continually be open to growing and new experiences and new ideas, meeting new people, going new places, listening to kick-ass podcasts like this one. I mean, really, really unleash that, you know, insatiable appetite to grow. That's pillar number one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Beautiful. Pillar number two for me is really all about family. I mean, mm. what is wealth if you don't have someone to share it with? And that starts with yourself. I mean, you got to acknowledge yourself for all of the amazing things that you do because what's wrong is always available, but so is what's right. And the more we can really, you know, honor ourselves for doing, you know, the right thing and 
supporting people and all of that, I, I think that that builds a foundation of wealth that, you know, just helps you continue to up level and go to new heights. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's so true. I mean, it's, it's easy to focus on building the wealth, but if you're doing it for nobody, what's the point? That's exactly right. So if number one is growth and number two is, you know, sharing the experience with other people and that's not just family, I should mention it's with, you know, yep. my siblings, my clients, my tenants, strangers I've never met. I mean, we're talking about humanity there, but the third one and my most favorite one of all Todd, and I think you know this about me is contribution. You know, the number one thing that gets me up in the morning is knowing that I'm going to make a difference in somebody's life, whether it's, you know, through a coaching call, whether it's through standing on stage, delivering a keynote speech, whether it's getting on awesome podcasts like this one. What if I just plant one seed of inspiration in another human being where they go, wow, that's quite something. I think I'm going to absolutely go out there and do things differently tomorrow than I did today. Well, that's what it makes it all worthwhile. So in terms of my growth, sharing it and contributing, those are my three pillars to wealth. You know, it's funny, the last one that you mentioned, the contribution, we always think about, you know, donating, donating our time, donating our money, and that's contribution. And it is, but what you just talked about and mentioned some of the things are contribution is you're contributing, yet you're still building your wealth while contributing and you're doing it in a positive way. And that's something that some of us don't even think about is that, you know, I'm buying these apartments and I'm taking a rundown apartment, oftentimes gross apartment that maybe people sh maybe shouldn't be living in or don't deserve to live in that. And I'm taking it and I'm bringing it up and, and making the apartment a lot nicer. Now, am I giving that away for free? No, I'm charging people for it, but I'm not, I'm not gouging them. I'm charging them fair market value and I'm giving them a good, clean, nice place to live that they can be proud of. And I'm affecting their life in a positive way. And not only am I doing that for them, now I'm giving other people a job, an opportunity to then they're creating a difference. They're getting excited about the community they're building. I, I just had a phone call with one of my managers today on site, and she was so excited about the the changes in the property and the impact it's making on these tenants' lives and how happy that makes her to get these compliments and, and uh, you know, people are smiling at her and happy and thanking her. And so it's affecting not only my tenants lives, but other people's lives that are working at the property too. Oh, I absolutely love that. And congratulations to you and, and you're spot on about the, the property managers, the contractors that are improving the premises. I mean, you're improving communities, you're improving sanitation. You're just, you're really doing what we talked about, which is expansion, that, that there's universal laws that govern this whole beautiful blue planet. And that's, you know, partially the law of improvement, the law of compensation, the law of cause and effect. I mean, if you believe in the law of gravity, which means if you jump off the roof of your house, you're going to go down. There's all these other laws in effect. And you're talking really about the one that I just said, it's the law of contribution. Yep. Every single thing on this planet must contribute in a meaningful way. Like trees give off oxygen, yep. you know, animals and plants give us food, fish gives us food, you know? So ultimately you really want to ask yourself, you know, how am I contributing? How am I using this natural law and how am I receiving? Because if there's one thing I've learned too, in terms of owning your pillars of wealth, you can't all be about contribution. You got to open up to receive, yep. you know? It's like the masculine and the feminine. The masculine and the feminine is the absolute, you know, universal, you know, one, two punch that we need to create other human beings, you know? And so as we give and receive to our significant other, and as we give and receive to our community, our fellow business people, our tenants, I mean, this is really what makes the world go round. And without it, you know, we wouldn't get anywhere. We wouldn't advance humanity. So huge props to you, my man. Well, and then when we're talking about receiving, I mean, how good does it feel when you give something and somebody receives it and they're happy for it? So you need to be doing the same thing. 
Well, it's even more than that, Todd. What I used to be is I used to be that guy that gave and gave and gave and gave, you know, and, you know, I'd even, you know, take someone out for dinner and I'd always pay, you know, I'd pull up my visa. And even when I knew that they wanted to pay, I wouldn't let them. Yeah. Or, you know, if I knew they wanted to pay, I'd actually pretend I was going to the washroom and I'd go see the waitress and I'd say, here, ring this meal through now because I want to pay for my guest. But what I learned, Todd, was this, that I was stealing the joy away from the other person that truly did want to give back to me. Yeah. And so it was me being selfish to look after, you know, my own needs and what I thought was a contribution or a gift when I stole joy away from someone. And who wants to steal joy away from everyone, anyone? Because we all have emotional homes that we live in. And one of the you know, highest levels is joy or peace or love. And I was creating you know, this, this kind of this vibration in this other person that they were mad. You know? And ultimately, we don't want to be stealing joy from anyone, do we? Right. Yeah. So listeners, if you go to dinner with Trevor, just expect to pay the tab. <laughs> That's right. And Todd, <laughs> you're up next. I think uh, the next dinner that we get together for will be on you. So just uh, keep it perfect. in mind. Perfect. Um, well, awesome. Well, I, I think that's uh, a ton of good information that you've given. Uh, you are speaking of traveling, you're going to be in Minnesota in, uh, in September and you're going to be here September 20th and 21st at the North star real estate conference. So anybody who's listening wants to meet Trevor live, he's going to be there. Uh, he's going to be what our keynote speaker. Uh, and I know it's going to be an amazing, you know, I think we got you for 45 minutes or so that you're going to be speaking. You're going to be there um, and spending time with people. So they can meet you there, shake your hand. I'm excited to have you in Minnesota. It shouldn't hopefully be snowing, but you're used to cold anyway. You're from Canada. so That's right. Yeah, I'm no stranger to snow. In fact, I'm really looking forward to coming. And uh, I'm telling you, it's at events like yours, this North Star event where you know, I'll say it again, we all elevate each other's emotions. We all yeah. get around like-minded entrepreneurs that literally share best practices and tell stories about what they're doing. And, you know, it's not just what's working, but also learning what doesn't work so that we can shorten your learning curve and do what I call turn decades into days. I mean, who wouldn't want to be able to learn and apply things, especially in the real estate arena, to go out there and climb higher? So, Todd, Super stoked to be coming to the event. Can't wait to stand on stage, meet you and your guests. I've met you many times, but I really do want to expand this tribe. And um, any friend of Todd Dexheimer's is a friend of mine. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to having you there. How can our listeners get in touch with you and learn more about what you got going on? Absolutely. So first off, thanks for having me on. And there's a couple different ways your listeners can reach out to me. You can just head over to my website, which is trevormcgregor.com. Yep. That's T-R-E-V-O-R-M-C-G-R-E-G-O-R.com. Or even easier than that is just go over to coachwithtrevor.com. And at www.coachwithtrevor.com, not only can you find uh, a little bit more about me there, but you can also enter your name and your email address into this little box. And if you'd like, we'll set up a complimentary coaching session with you to discuss you know, how you can take your real estate game to the next level. Awesome. And I, I highly encourage people to do that. Uh, if you want to take your business, your real estate to that next level, uh, it, it's 100% worth the phone call. Absolutely. And you know, the number one thing that I look for in working with anyone, there's really two things. Number one, hunger. That is a hunger for going out there and making this planet better. And number two, Todd, is passion. I love to work with people like you who are passionate about what they do and together, you know, a high tide lifts all boats. So love to meet some more people and uh, extend that offer to anyone who's serious about going to the next level. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Trevor, appreciate it. You have a fantastic uh, rest of the day and uh, a great weekend. Thank you so much and uh, keep up the great work, Todd. Love what you do. Take care. Thanks. 
A special thanks to Trevor McGregor for joining us for a second time on the show and bringing just an absolute ton of value. Always a joy to have him on and speak to Trevor. He's going to be at our conference on September 20 and 21st, so you're going to want to come. Uh, the Honestly, the value, the ticket price that you're going to spend is absolutely worth it just to hear Trevor talk. So uh, along with many of the other great speakers, but just to hear Trevor talk, he's going to be talking on Saturday and it's going to be definitely worth the price of admission. So a couple of things I took from Trevor on this episode. Uh, first of all, he talks about just start with a single step. Uh, you don't need to take that big giant leap. Just start with that single step. Uh, the other thing he talks about is always grow, have new experiences, uh, learn new ideas, you know, always be growing, always be expanding your mind, expanding your horizons and be open for opportunities. And then the last thing he talks about, uh, make sure you are, are making sure that your family your friends and humanity are being served, that you keep them at the top of the list and don't forget them as you're working. Sometimes we work so hard to try to get success ourselves that we lose focus uh, and we lose our identity of what that really means to us in the first place. A lot of us are doing that for our family, our friends and humanity. And then as we go, sometimes it's easy to lose focus. So make sure that that stays at the top of your mind. Again, appreciate Trevor joining us. He's going to be at our conference. So I'm excited to have him there and take, just take a couple things, one or two things from this episode, go back, listen to it and make sure that you actually apply it to your business, to your life and make some changes. That's how you're going to change is making sure that when you listen to this podcast or any other podcast, you take actually some action from the podcast, take those action steps and make things happen. So do that. I'm Todd Dexammer. I'm signing out. Hey, make every day Saturday. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. A couple things before we go again, go on to our Facebook page, Pillars of Wealth. We'd love to have you on there. Go on to iTunes, give us a rating and review and subscribe to the show. Also, um, you know, don't forget, reach out to me if you want any help with uh, potentially growing your business and reach out to John Styles to help you buy or sell real estate. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Have a fantastic the rest of the day. And as I say, make every day a Saturday.